Hey folks, due to a few requests, I've created a tutorial on launching the Saturn V manually. That is, without using the autopilot to get to orbit. If you're watching this, I'm going to assume you already have AMSO installed and are somewhat familiar with it. So, in this tutorial, I'm just going to jump right into the left seat and start us off. Uh, we really only need two MFDs open to reference during the ascent. The surface MFD and the aligned plane MFD. You can change the aligned plane MFD to the orbit MFD once you get established on course. However, to keep things even simpler, you can download the HUD data MFD. This handy little utility displays flight data of your choosing, which you can position anywhere you like on your screen. It provides a great heads-up situational awareness and also eliminates the need to keep the surface MFD open. I'll include a link to it in the description. Once you have downloaded it, just open the zip file and drag the huddatamfd.dll and the huddatamfd.cfg files to your Orbiter Modules Plugin folder. Also, don't forget to enable the MFD when you open Orbiter Launchpad. Under the Modules tab, locate the HUD Data MFD on the list and check the box next to it to enable it. When you open the HUD Data MFD config file, you'll see a list of 16 different types of data that you can add to the data slots. You can have as many as 8 data slots displayed at one time. Beneath the list of data types, is a list of the eight slots that the data types can occupy. Simply type the number that precedes the data type into the slot you want it to occupy. The data slots are displayed from top to bottom on your screen when the HUD is powered on. For this tutorial, I'll place the data type vertical speed in meters per second into slot 1, which is the top line displayed on the HUD, airspeed in miles per hour into slot 2, and altitude in feet into slot 3. At the bottom, next to HUD X, you can set how many positions from the left of the screen you want your data to be displayed, and next to HUD Y, how many positions down from the top of the screen. For my screen, I'm running 1920 by 1080, this places the HUD data just beneath the altitude display on orbiter surface HUD. You'll just have to experiment with these position values to get it where you want uh, on your setup. You can set the HUD data display up manually once you have it open in Orbiter, but I just find it easier to set it up ahead of time. Unless you edit the default data in the config file, you'll have to set it up every time you open it in Orbiter, which is kind of a pain. Now, the first thing I like to do is retract the swing arm using the J key, just to get it out of the way. I don't like running through it. And of course we hear the usual commentary. I'll mute him for now. As soon as the swing arm is retracted, we'll press and hold the plus key on the numbers pad to go to full throttle, then tap the control key to lock it on. Or just apply full throttle on your joystick. I do that too. Now, as soon as we clear the launch tower, Press and hold the 2 key on the numbers pad to pitch away from the vertical a little bit, which will straighten the HUD out. And once the HUD straightens up, hold the 3 key on the number pad for a couple of seconds to begin to slew toward a heading of 73 degrees. And use 6 and 4 on the numbers pad to keep the HUD ladder straight up and down. When you reach 73 degrees, hit 5 on the number pad to kill the rotation, and use 4 and 6 to straighten the HUD up if you need to. When you reach 3 kilometers in altitude, hold the 2 key down until the foresight, or attitude indicator, catches up with the velocity vector. Just hold that 2 button, or 2 key down, until that foresight rests right on top of the velocity vector. Then use the 2 and 8 keys to keep the foresight on top of the velocity vector all the way down to the 30 degree pitch ladder on the HUD. Just follow the velocity vector straight on down.
you know you've maintained approximately the correct pitch rate if you arrive on the 30 degree pitch ladder about the same time as you hear the inboard cutoff call out. When you get to the 30 degree pitch ladder, kill rotate, five button on the keyboard or keypad. And just maintain 30 degrees. Now you could jump outside to watch the first stage separate at about 240 GET. Uh, jump back out and watch the skirt and the tower jet. We got skirt zap. Roger, we confirm skirt zap. Tower's going. Roger, tower. I just hold the control key down on the keyboard to fine tune my pitch inputs while tapping 2 and 8 to keep that uh, bore sight right on the 30 degree pitch ladder as much as possible. If you just hit kill rotate when you reach the 30 degree pitch ladder and forget about it, that bore sight will slowly pitch back up and you'll gain too much vertical speed. So all I'm watching really is my vertical speed and altitude just above it on the surface HUD. I'm not adjusting for the aligned plane MFD at all. As long as we start out on that 73 degree heading, we should be good from there on out. I should mention I'm flying the Apollo 11 mission because different missions launch onto different azimuths or different launch headings. My target altitude for this flight is 187.7 kilometers. My goal is to adjust my pitch and control that vertical speed and slowly adjust that vertical speed down to zero about the time we hit 187.7 kilometers. Our vertical speed is currently approaching 370 meters per second. At 165 kilometers in altitude, I'm going to pitch down to about 15 degrees and try to get that vertical speed to settle down at right about 50 meters per second. Just adjust your pitch as needed to keep that vertical speed where you want it. Again, just keep an eye on that altitude and vertical speed 
and try to get your vertical speed to zero about the same time you get to 187.7 kilometers or whatever your target altitude may be. When that inboard engine goes, you're going to drop some vertical speed real quick. So keep that in mind. If you're real close to zero, if you're right on the edge, you may want to pitch up ahead of time before that inboard cuts off. And I try to get to my target altitude and near zero vertical speed before second stage separation. That way I have plenty of time before a main engine cutoff to get my vertical speed right on zero or as close as possible. And I'm just holding the control key down while I tap 2 and 8 on the keypad to fine tune my pitch rate. Now here I'm going to let my vertical speed run away high a little bit in anticipation of that second stage separation. From here on out to Miko, my goal is just to fine tune my pitch and maintain a vertical speed as close to zero as possible. Again, holding down the control key and tapping two and eight to control that vertical speed. You can see we have that velocity vector pegged right on the level horizon line. Ideally, we want that bore sight right on the level horizon line with the velocity vector at main engine cutoff. And the more near zero our vertical speed at main engine cutoff, the more circularized our orbit will be. I'm watching my PEA, or periapsis altitude, on my orbit MFD, and as that value approaches 100 kilometers, I'm going to hold the control key down and hit the minus key on the number pad to slowly throttle the engines back, and then hit the star key on the number pad for main engine cutoff. 
And we're showing 186.7 by 187.7 within a kilometer. Very low eccentricity. That's what we're after. I should also mention that I have non-spherical gravity sources enabled. Apollo 11, this is Houston. You are confirmed to go for orbit. And uh, this is a little bit easier if that's, uh, if that's not checked. Okay, the Saturn V to parking orbit manually. I hope this helped you guys out. See you next time.